I want to welcome everybody again to meet the Maker Series at Arlington Heights Memorial Library. We are very delighted you're able to join us this afternoon. My name is Carol and he exhibits coordinator at the library. And I'm one of the planners of the program. This is our second of six events introducing you to the possibilities of making. You can find details about the full series and meet all of our makers at um, the URL. So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce you to my colleague and our host, Chris Kruger, Makerspace Branch Assistant Manager. Chris, please take it away. Hi, everybody. Uh, as Carol said, my name is Chris Kruger. I'm the Makerspace Branch Assistant Manager here at the library. And uh, before we jump into the program, I just wanted to go over a little bit about what a makerspace is. If you're new to the idea or you just haven't had a chance to visit one of the uh, local library makerspaces in our area. Yeah, a makerspace is a collaborative workspace. It's a place to spread out and work on a project. If you don't have the space at home, it's a place to use tools and equipment that you might not normally have access to, a place to network and meet fellow makers in your community. And it's a place to new learn new skills and talents. Now at the library's makerspace, we're gonna have some really exciting technology and equipment for things like laser cutting, 3D printing, embroidery, as well as classes on art, cooking, sewing, and more. If you'd like more information about our makerspace opening in 2021, and I really, really hope you would, uh, you can check out the makerspace page on our website at ahml.info slash makerspace. I'm gonna drop a link in the chat there for you. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about our Meet the Maker series. Um, in this series, we're going to explore different ideas and interpretations of what making is. We're really fortunate to have makers from across the Chicagoland area who want to share their passions and interests with us. I think this uh, series is special because it lets us connect with a really interesting group of makers with a diverse skill set. From artists to designers, craftsmen, and hobbyists, the maker community really covers a lot of ground as far as who considers themselves to be a maker and what it is they like to make. The makers in this series will cover quite a few mediums, such as textiles, screen printing, mold making, bead work, glass art, and more. So I hope you find some inspiration while learning about the process and techniques from this series. I think this series will be a lot of fun, um, not only to see these makers work and talk about their passions, but also it gives us the opportunity to ask questions and get feedback from these makers as well. So with that being said, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our second maker in our Meet the Maker series. Nastasia is a master of traditional folk art, researcher of Ukrainian folk culture, ethnographer, collector of Ukrainian folk antiquities, and a member of the Ukrainian Folk Art Masters Union. Her area of creative interest include hand art embroidery, beadwork design, beaded decoration of folk costumes, and more. She is also the head of both the Bead Art Studio in the Ukrainian Institute of Modern Art and Art School in St. Nicholas Cathedral. She's also a reporter for the American Ukrainian independent newspaper, Time and Events. With that being said, I'm gonna let you take it away. Hello everybody, my name is Nastasia. I am beadwork artist. Today I will try to present Ukrainian traditional folk art. Also, I will show my own artworks and the process of their creation. I was born in a beautiful part of Western Ukraine called Bukovina. Bukovina region is very rich in the traditions, arts, and uh, talented people. The tradition of our ancestors passed down from generation to generation. And I think the law to the fault art uh, passed to me from my mom and my grandma. In general, uh, Ukrainian folk culture is very rich in traditions. The main of that are the tradition of clothes decoration uh, called Vyshevanka. I have a very old Vyshevanka, maybe a hundred years old. This is uh, uh, lace, lace fro from Bukovina. Mm -hmm. It is hand embroidery read bad bits. Uh, also, I uh, show you the hat. It is from wedding, wedding dress. It is a um, hat for bride. 
Look, we in a bright war, the shirt like this and the hat like this. Okay, think. Uh, the second tradition is a tradition of uh, Easter egg decoration. This is a uh, tiny symbols painted by a hand in the small surface. It is really egg. This is from Helen collections. And of course, my favorite tradition is a uh, bead art called Gerdan. Um, from young age, I was very interested what uh, clothes and what jewelry Bukovinian women wore a uh, hundred years ago. It is, I show you one photo of that. It is traditional folk costumes. For many years, I collected ethnic Bukovinian embroidery ornaments, fragments of uh, antique clothes and uh, wall costumes. I show you just one piece of that. There is antique ornaments from uh, a blouse. I have a uh, 600 pieces like this. Every year my collection was replenished with uh, new artifacts and uh, this was the impetus for researching the history of the Bukovinian ornaments. As a result, I published four colorful book albums. Three, four. And these books are available at the Arlington Heights Library because Nastya donated them to the library. Oh, sure. A person is happy when he does what he loves and loves what he does. I think I'm really happy because I have a uh, I like the work with uh, beads. Uh, my designer's career began after I saw a collection uh, antique bead work in one of the um, Ukrainian museums. I really like them and I wanted to learn how to do something like that. And um, the learning process uh, took a long time uh, because there are uh, uh, was no one to teach, no literature, no Pinterest. I studied exclusi exclusively from uh, museum photos. When I learned, I wanted to teach the other people. The Helen was my first adult student. Yeah, that's just uh, started teaching uh, young kids, primary school kids at the St. Nicholas uh, Cathedral School in the Ukrainian village. And I was there, this big lady among these tiny little kids. So as a member of the board of the Ukrainian Institute of Modern Art on Chicago Avenue, I started a group with her as a teacher of women. And there were like 10 to 15 of us who have started what, seven years ago? Oh, uh, eight, maybe. Eight years ago, yeah. So all of us have produced a lot of things under her guidance. As a designer, I work in the several directions. The first way is the revival of antique samples from museum and private collections. I make a uh, reconstruction from them. There is a reconstruction from antique Bukovinian necklaces. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here is my cover of my book. Okay. Number two. Number two, the um, I also I uh, make my own projects combining antique and modern. Okay.
This is our wedding for bride. And uh, my favorite puppy. This earrings. And one more. Okay, this is a project with combination of Ukrainian and American culture. It is a uh, quarters, yeah. American quarters. And this is uh, also, I, ten, I take in uh, ornaments from Asian Bukovinian shirts. And this is the last one. Okay. Also, I love, oh, forgot. <laughs> this is bracelet and necklace. Uh, also, I love to work uh, with a uh, painting of famous artists. It is the Starry Night. Starry Night Van Gogh. It's a moving. Also, I very love to create a project uh, for clothes and accessory decorations. There is a head. I love it. There is the second head. And back. And a evening bag. Yeah, evening bag. Okay, so that's not uh, Today I will show you a process of work in the three different techniques loom, more, loom weaving, hand embroidery, and bead knitting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, uh, the work in with the beads needs a special attention, so I asked Helen to comment on work process. So this is done on a loom and she, her husband makes these looms small and large and they're available also to, on sale at uh, Etsy. And it's a very different way of doing things. Go ahead. Okay, I, the first I, uh, each project uh, I draw in the paper. Oh, this camera. It is so. Uh, project. And uh, today I need uh, to show you a uh, work, uh, working process for creating a bracelet in a small loom. Okay. Okay. So the number of threads is equal to the number of beads in a row plus one. And she has a thread with a needle and then tie working a thread to the first left of warp thing, um, threads. And then starting between the warp threads. No, weaving. Yeah, and then fix. Yeah, so they're secured. They're secured at each end. Uh -huh. And then she has a box of beads with the colors that she wants to use. Okay. Six bytes. So she's now putting beads on the needle. So it's six whites. So I think uh, I think the top of the loom is a little bit cut off. I don't know if you guys can move a little bit uh, closer to the camera for us. That'd be great. Like this. Uh, a little bit further down <laughs> to your right, it looks like. Okay, she's put, picking up the beads. There you go. That's great. Thank you. Okay, good. Two, two, and three. One, two, three. Okay. So she's got the beads for the next row on the needle now. 
And now she's going to push them through all the threads on the loop. Oh. Okay. Right, so it goes underneath, then she pushes this, them into the thread in the right order. Okay, three more. And, and now she goes on top and pushes the thread and the needle through the beads on top of the thread that's on the loom to secure it. Mm -hmm. We have a question in the chat while you're working there. Um, how long does it take to complete a, uh, a piece like you're working on right now? Well, this is a bracelet. So how long will it take you to make a bracelet? Oh, maybe, maybe 16 hours. I make it in the uh, set to my blouse. Yeah. I, I uh, make a blouse and the same. And the same pattern will be same a bracelet pattern. to complement the blouse. Yeah, this is very time consuming and hard on the eyes, <laughs> but it's a beautiful way. Looming is a very beautiful, way of doing things because it's very geometric and very straight. It, it, it takes, takes a lot of time. Yeah, okay, next project okay. is... The next project is the making of a get gone, which is a necklace that I have on. Okay. And here's her get gone. This is a project. Okay. So first she draws that on graph paper with all the colors and how it's supposed to go. Up and down, up and down. The beads, yeah. Here are the beads. And take, okay, I will be show. One brown, one Red, one brown, two, and okay, so she puts it in the top bead, and then every third bead, the colors that she picks up goes into the next third bead, and it goes down and then up and down and then up, and this is the result. Yes, this is. And it working up, down, up, down, up, down, up, uh, according to this. To that pattern. Yeah, pattern. Down, up, down, up, down, up, and weaving. Okay. Now the next thing that she will be doing is hand embroidery. Okay, I have uh, ready the bracelet. I buy it. Yeah. It is a grill. It's like a plastic in the grill form. And this is gonna be a petty point. Those of you who are familiar with petty point, it's uh, half, half a stitch done diagonally and all in one direction like this. It's all diagonal. Okay. Okay, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So she's putting the on top of the little square on the top hole on the right on the left hand side. Then she puts on the bead and goes down to the diagonal right hand lower hole. I show you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is uh, this uh, pattern I take in uh, from uh, ancient Bukovinian shirts too. I try to show you. Let's see. Yeah, these are pieces of fabric that she found embroidered. And during the war, of course, a lot of things were disappearing. So uh, a gentleman from the age of nine until he died, how old was he in the United States? Oh, Snigur in 17. In, uh, yeah, in 2017, he died. But he was collecting these tiny pieces of fabric wherever he could and put them in a museum in Bukovina. And Nasty, of course, had an act access to that and her book is based on his collection. And this is how we preserve everything that was, you know, 100, 150 years old. So we are done with the demonstration. All right. Questions now or anything, whatever. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, the beadwork was so interesting to see up close on the loom. Um, very, very cool. We do have some great questions from uh, our attendees today. So if you don't mind, let me read one off to you. Um, do the traditional patterns change from different regions of Ukraine? Yes, yes. The different regions of Ukraine, Ukraine has our own pattern. With old colors. Oh, oh, colors and the patterns. Colors as well, interesting. Um, well, it looks like you talked about this a little bit, but we did have a question about how you design your patterns. Um, it looks like you do that on graph paper by hand. Uh, there was a question of whether or not you have a computer program that does it. Do you do that all by hand? Uh, yes, but, but I do it by hand because uh, computer programs took a lot of time. You know? uh, I have no time for this. I have a lot of projects in my head and uh, I need to, to time for, uh, for doing that. <laughs> I, 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 I love to I love to uh, paint the projects. Uh, here's a question about your materials. Um, what yarn or thread do you use to put in the loom, and is it the same as uh, what is on the needle? Uh, sometimes the same, sometimes not. But uh, um, the better using in uh, Fireline. Fireline uh, brand. It is it, it is it is expensive, but it's very nice. I love to work with it. It's available on Amazon, like everything else. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I think I think I'm sure a lot of people coming today would like to know, um, you know, those details of of how you really get the work done, what materials you use, what what works best for you. Um, there isn't a question. What what weight of Fireline do you use? Uh, I use uh, six and uh, eight uh, wow. pounds. Right. Um, do Ukrainians make their own beads traditionally? No, no, no. Oh, this no. is this is uh, exclusively from uh, Czech beads. Okay. Um, what uh do you have anything you're working on right now that you're excited about any projects you're currently working on oh, today, oh today i <laughs> i prepare a pro project to tomorrow's classes i have a classes in tomorrow yes and uh, uh, this project will be in the oh. tomorrow's classes <laughs> but now i am um, i i work in uh, almost and uh, one my of my favorite necklace. It is not ready, but. Wow. Yeah, I, I very love it because I have a silver blouse and I want to do, I love, very love this uh, ornament. And every day I, I doing something new, new. <laughs> well, you, gotta, you gotta stay fresh, I like that. <laughs> uh, we have a question here. Um, could you tell us more about your classes? Are they available to anyone? Uh, no, it's not uh, available because coronavirus, you know, it, um, but after that, I think yeah. so. 
Okay, great. We people can contact like tomorrow, you for your tomorrow. We are meeting, but there's going to be only three people because we are very respectful of distancing and so on. But once this is over, like around March, we hope, or after the vaccine, then uh, people who are interested can contact Nastya through Etsy and uh, come and join us. Great, that's excellent. Uh, let me, I think we have time for one more. Um, do you make beaded ornaments? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, Here we are. Look at that. This is Look uh, at that. Easter eggs. <laughs> uh, this is it's for Christmas decoration. Oh, beautiful. Well, I hang these on my Christmas tree anyways, whether they look like eggs or not, because they are so beautiful. And I have five grandkids and every year, each child gets one made for me. And uh, another lady that joins us is also very, very uh, astute that by doing this and she does that for her family, which is a lot larger. So we start like in July doing things for Christmas. <laughs> No, that makes I'm sense. trying to make a home decoration. This is decoration candlestick. It's a Easter egg. Nice. <laughs> well, uh, Carol, I think we're coming up on time. If you'd like to uh, take us out, that'd be great. Sure. Thank you so much, Nastasia, Helen, and Chris for the wonderful program. I also want to invite everybody to join our next program uh, of the series on Tuesday. December 8th, um, that is at uh, 7 p.m. to 7.45 Central Time with Tim Harrison. And I know, Chris, you uh, have more insights about his work. Do you want to give us a little bit teaser? Oh, Tim makes really, really cool uh, cosplay props. He does a lot of fabrication and 3D printing. Um, a very, very impressive skill set, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. He's going to show us uh, some mold making. It's going to be very cool. Oh. Yes. So uh, sign up for the program. And again, I will um, include a link for registration in chat. Thank you, very, thank you very much, everyone, for participating. I hope you enjoy and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.